Ah, summer is in the air. That must mean bombs are exploding in Israel. We're gonna talk about it. Welcome in. This is Religionless Christianity. I am your host, Spencer. This is my beautiful wife, Nikki. <laughs> and today we're going to touch on a few topics that we found interesting and pertinent in the news today. So before we dive in, honey, do you have anything you want to say? Uh, yeah, I'm really excited uh, about our outreach today. We We just did one road and we had several people with us and you know, we all take a different house. We don't all go up to the same house together as too many people. But um, I went with my friend Naomi and uh, my youngest and, and her son was with her. And he went and knocked on doors with our two boys and our oldest daughter. And um, we only had two people answer their doors or we only talked to two people. And the first person, a lady answered the door and she... Um, she handed back the invitation, the church invitation, and she's like, nah, I'm an atheist. And just, we just decided not to, um, spend time debating with her because we are out to, um, try to talk to people who are ready. Like what Jesus would say, like they're ripe for the harvest. And they, I just don't want to pull at a fruit from a tree that's not ready. Like they're not ripe. You're just going to be arguing and it's, wasting time and let's go on. We don't know who else in the neighborhood might be ready. And I'm really glad we moved on because the lady um, and her daughter that we talked to, well, we knocked on the door and nobody answered. And as we're walking away, they actually pulled up in the driveway. And so we um, told them what church we uh, belong to and you know why we were out knocking on her door because she was wondering who we were. <laughs> and she is a Christian and she actually goes to a church I used to go to. And so I know that she's heard the gospel. She's heard it. Um, she's heard the truth several times. The pastor there uh, preaches the gospel really well. So she ended up opening up about um, her past, how her mom was a witch, like a practicing witch. And you just don't hear people talk about that a lot. And I don't know if some people are afraid to bring that up or they'll think, um, another Christian wouldn't understand or just say, oh, that's, that stuff's not real, but it is. And so she's got a lot of de uh, demonic activity going on in her home. And her teenage daughter was there confirming all of it and telling us all these, you know, you'd think scary things, but um, we, we have authority over Satan's kingdom and we don't need to be afraid. I know Hollywood movies have programmed us to be fearful, like they're scary monsters or something, but we have authority over them. So I told her my mother-in-law actually does deliverance uh, ministry and she would be very happy to come over and cast all of it out of her house and just teach her her authority and teach her how to pray and stand on God's word. And it's something a lot of Christians are timid about and they back away. It makes them uncomfortable, but this is what Jesus did. He cast demons out of people and his disciples wanted to do it and they tried and he said it's because of your um well they tried and they failed and he said it was because of your unbelief and also this kind doesn't come out except by prayer and fasting so this could be a really good um episode to talk about in depth later but anyways we're excited for this lady's home to be free of it for her life to be free of it and Hopefully we'll come back soon and have a praise report about this because she's my mother-in-law is going to go over there soon <laughs> and get this taken care of. <laughs> yeah. So what seemed like kind of a dud of an outreach turned into a pretty exciting one. So we're eager to see how this mm -hmm. um, resolves itself. It should be a good testimony and uh, like and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on whatever podcast and platform you're on. If you had tried in the past to get on Discord and you had issues, I had 
some issues with Discord I was not aware of. I think I got those resolved. So please go check out our Discord. That's where our prayer requests, our praise reports, mm -hmm. we have sermon recommendations on there. And that's where we really like to focus a lot of our, you know, back and forth with you guys is, you know, we want to yeah. get off of Facebook and Twitter and all that nonsense as fast as we can. So Discord is where we're hoping to get that. And then God willing, soon I'll have the website kind of fully up and running, mm -hmm. but I'm still working on that. So today we're going to touch on a couple of news stories. Like I said, obviously, obviously Israel is in the news, but before that, we're going to get into a sports topic. We don't do sports a lot on this show, but when sports and religion kind of align, I think it's worth mentioning because some of you might actually watch sports. And, uh, you know, if you're talking sports and religion, there's only one person to talk about, Tim Tebow. So Tim Tebow is in the news, honey. And if you want to read that headline and the first couple paragraphs. Yeah. It says, iconic former Jaguars, or is it Jaguars? You said it different. I say Jaguars. <laughs> I'm from Michigan, so who knows? Okay, iconic former Jaguars player derails racial outrage over Tim Tebow. We don't need Colin Kaepernick on our team. And paragraph, an iconic former Jacksonville Jaguars player derailed the social media outrage over a report that the team will sign Tim Tebow while controversial former player Colin Kaepernick continues unsigned. Supporters of Kaepernick and his anti-police crusade took to Twitter in outrage that Tebow, an outspoken Christian and former quarterback, might join the team at the tight end position. Many claimed it was the latest example of racist discrimination in the NFL against Kaepernick. Yep, so Tim Tebow signed with the Jacksonville Jaguars and the woke leftists on Twitter are freaking out and losing their mind. So we got this story from theblaze.com. And again, like all of our news articles that we linked in the description, you can go check this out for yourself. And the iconic player they're talking about, if you're familiar with the Jaguars and why would you be, I don't know, <laughs> is Jimmy Smith, the wide receiver that played for them. So yeah, the leftists on Twitter are freaking out about Tim Tebow signing. So I don't know. So Kaepernick doesn't agree with the outrage. He's you think he's embarrassed about it? Like they knew it was gonna happen, probably. Oh, they knew. I mean, no, he's not embarrassed about it because Kaepernick makes millions of dollars a year letting He's not really disappointed. No, I mean he's this is probably another payday for him, you know, because the only time you ever hear about Colin Kaepernick anymore is when someone else gets signed that's not Kaepernick and then everyone freaks out. But, and if you're unfamiliar with the situation, Colin Kaepernick, I think back in 2016, he sort of kicked off the whole kneeling during the, the anthem protest in the NFL. Um, that's sort of, I mean, a lot of people kind of look at that as kind of the jumping off point to like, you know, where we are in sports today with all the Black Lives Matter and the social justice stuff. Colin Kaepernick's was kind of the the jump start for all of that. And the craziest thing is like Colin Kaepernick never talks. Like he never says anything. These are all just people on Twitter that freak out because a, a black quarterback didn't get signed and a white quarterback did. Which is so stupid because these people on Twitter that are freaking out, they don't watch sports anyways. Like they don't care about sports. They just care about some made up notion of oppression and racism that may exist out there in the they world somewhere. They want him to think that he's a victim and. Yeah, like, and the thing with, you know, Kaepernick, he was obviously a better quarterback than Tim Tebow. Um, like he took the 49ers to a Super Bowl at, when he was a starter, but he wasn't good. You know, at the end of his career, he only played for a few years. He was not very good. And I think actually someone can correct me in the comments, but I'm pretty sure he was, he turned down like a contract extension because he wanted to hit the free agent market because he thought he could make more money, I, as far as I remember. And then he ultimately never got re-signed and he hasn't been signed since. So he definitely played his hand wrong there. And he had chances in the past. I think the Baltimore Ravens at one point were going to sign him as a backup quarterback. And then his girlfriend basically went to Twitter and called the Baltimore Ravens owner like a slave owner or something like that. So they obviously oh, wow. didn't sign him. So, <laughs> you know, 
Tebow is not really the point of this article. It's Colin Kaepernick. You know, this could be any old quarterback, whatever, that got signed and Kaepernick didn't, and they would freak out and lose their mind. So uh, that's kind of the, the crux of the story. And I think, first off, I think as a Christian, like, you should be okay with Tim Tebow being uh, signed, maybe even happy. Like, you should rejoice yeah. in it a fellow brother or sister in Christ getting a chance. And, you know, and Tim Tebow, for all of his failures as a NFL player, like he's actually seems like a great dude. I mean, if you follow him on Twitter, he's preaching the word every day on there, giving inspirational <laughs> and godly messages every day. So you should feel happy that he got signed and Kaepernick didn't. And Kaepernick sucks. Like, I don't mean to be crude or rude, but like he is – kind of the fulcrum of a lot of the issues that we have in this country and a lot of reasons why people like me who love sports don't really get to watch it anymore because you just can't take it. It kind of all goes back to Kaepernick. So like, I'm happy he's not in the NFL and I'll be interested to see what Tebow does. I don't think it'll go that well, but you never know. I mean, um, but then the last point I wanted to make on this, I think we should pray for Tim Tebow uh, just in case there's a small chance he has a hole in his soul. Um, Why? What's wrong? Well, I just, I read this, you know, if you're unfamiliar with Tebow's career, he was in the NFL. He was a star, maybe one of the greatest college football players of all time. Kind of flamed out in the NFL. Only was in the NFL for a couple of years. And he went to minor league baseball. He's done broadcasting. And now he's back in the NFL trying his hand again. And it just, when I read this story again and I heard about it, I was just afraid that maybe there's like some part of Tim Tebow that he feels like he sort of needs this like sports atmosphere to sort of fill something inside of him. Cause he's a mm. young, healthy, good looking dude. He's been a broadcaster. He's well-spoken. He's got a ton of opportunities, mm. but he can't seem to let this. So maybe he just loves athletics, which is perfectly fine. But I just thought maybe lift him up in prayer in case there's something a little more nefarious going on where he just, he can't let this thing go. So hmm. that was kind of the first story we wanted to touch on just because, you know, Tim Tebow's a big, um, kind of a big... You take a lot of heat off him. Like, I was just thinking, like, he knows all the drama in sports and he is smart and he can go into another area and just get out of the spotlight. Like, it just seems like something I'd want to do if all of that was going on. And that's the other thing, too. Maybe he kind of likes this spotlight where... He needs to maybe let that go a little bit. And, you know, who knows? I just, I think we should pray for him. He seems like a great mm -hmm. guy, really connected with God, but you just never know where people's hearts are and all of that. The second story, probably the more important story, is kind of touched on in the opener. Uh, Israel and Gaza are, or Palestine are going back at it again, um, like they seemingly always do. So if you want to read this headline, honey, and the first mm. paragraph, we got this from Bloomberg. Okay, the headline reads, Israel strikes Gaza home of Hamas leader, destroys AP office. Israel slammed the Gaza Strip with airstrikes in a dramatic ex escalation that included bombing the home of a senior Hamas leader, killing a family of 10 in a refugee camp, most of them children, and pulverizing a high rise that housed the Associated Press and other media. Yep. Mm. Must be summertime in the Middle East again. <laughs> so I just thought, I thought things were going well in the Middle East and wasn't President Trump signing um, peace accords. So he was. What, what, what's happened? What's changed? Elections since... happen and elections change things. And, you know, Barack Obama famously said elections have consequences. And I don't know necessarily all the ins and outs of this, but yeah, I mean, Israel was in the process of signing peace accords with different countries, not Palestine or anything, but um, that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. And now they're back to dropping bombs on each other. So um, hmm. just kind of, as you were reading through that headline, you know, the news media, the leftists, you know, the anti-God leftists, you know, they always, in my mind, when I read these articles and hear these stories, they always seem to try to have a slant that like somehow Israel is the bad guy in all of this. And 
you read that headline mm-hmm. and they're like, oh, they destroyed an AP office and, you know, 10 refugees were killed and children were killed. And you read and you're like, oh my God, that sounds terrible. But I think it's important to note that like Hamas is a terrorist organization. They are every bit, you know, Al Qaeda, Taliban, Hamas is in that category. They're a terrorist organization. So they are not already killing women and children. Yeah, they're bad people. Um, But then they're going to say, but Israel did this, but they were just retaliating. Yeah. And that's the reason it happens. Like, so they write in there, you know, children got killed or the AP office got destroyed, but Hamas has a long history of using basically like launching rockets from school buildings and hospitals. I have another article I'll link back from 2014 where they would launch rockets from the tops of school buildings and from hospitals. And then when Israel retaliates and they hit the area where the rockets launch, they go, oh my God, see, they attacked the school building. (laughs) You're like, so these aren't good people. Like they're launching rockets and stuff from civilian populated areas. Right. They weren't trying to just attack a school just to no they're not just trying to kill kids but at some point like if you're just gonna have someone launching a rocket into your country and like you have you either you know don't retaliate they just keep launching rockets or you know and even this article talks about it they destroyed the ap office well why did they destroy the ap office Mm -hmm. because the hamas leader was working in the same building as the ap office so Mm -hmm. like again yeah this is what Hamas does. They use human shields, human, you know, collateral damage basically so that they can play the victim card essentially. Like, oh, look at big bad Israel. Like we're just little oppressed Palestine trying to fight for what's ours. You know, they, the Gaza Strip or whatever. And big bad Israel is killing all of our kids when it's just not the case. And this doesn't seem to be the case either. And I think anytime you read an article like this, it's best to give Israel the benefit of the doubt. You know, they are our spiritual, uh, you know, cousins or ancestors, if you will. Uh, Our savior is a Jew. So, you know, and just on a more national level, like they're probably one of, if not our greatest ally in the world. Mm -hmm. So we should always look to give Israel the benefit of the doubt. You know, the anti-God, you know, leftists in the media aren't going to give them that benefit Mm. of the doubt so right yeah so that's definitely i think one way to look at it it's definitely sad i mean we should always be praying for these people and lifting Mm. israel and obviously palestine up in our prayers you know and these women and children that get killed and maimed in these attacks like i'm sure it's not their plan you know obviously if you're the wife of a hamas leader you're not really an innocent bystander but they know what's going on Oh, they yeah. see, I mean, she, they read these, if they read these articles, they would know what's really going on. Like they right. have a different perspective. And Israel is not like sneaky. They don't sneak attack. I mean, typically in attacks like these, and I think there's plenty of articles that'll highlight this. They send out like warnings ahead of time that, Hey, we're about to launch rockets and attack. So mm. the people that are still around typically know what's coming you know it's not really a big surprise but i mean still lift them up in prayer i mean there's kids that are going to die there's kids that are going to be left without parents and you know it's a terrible situation it's just different world there yeah um, it's an awful i mean i can't even imagine everybody in israel this is their existence like i think israel everybody that turns 18 in that country serves in the military for at least i think two years and like, I just think, what is the gospel like there? You preach the gospel and it's so different from the gospel here. You know, yeah. they believe on Jesus for different reasons that Christians here would. Well, I don't even know Jesus. what the actual percentage of like Christians are in Israel. I'm not I sure what know, that is. But, but I'm just thinking, I don't know, that just always comes to my mind. Different. It's probably not health, wealth, and prosperity. That's, what did I mean? Like, <laughs> it might be more like <sighs> hanging on to to Jesus at every turn. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, we just wanted to kind of highlight this because you're going to hear a lot in the news about these attacks. And I think it's generally always going to be slanted towards Israel as a bad guy. And that's just not the case. Um, Hamas is not someone to garner our, um, you know, pity. 
They are a terrorist organization. And Israel should, I think, always garner the benefit of the doubt when it comes to us. So that's all we got for today, honey. Do you have any last words? No, it's one of those things that just makes me speechless that it's going on, all the women and children, and just just lift everyone up in prayer, you know? Yeah, definitely. I mean, all of the Middle East is it's such a nightmare over there, and God needs to move in such a mighty way over in those parts of the world because, I mean, Israel is obviously a, a little bit unique in what they deal with, but... Mm-hmm. Every place over there is, is just not an enjoyable and a good place to live. So they definitely need our prayers, but yeah. that's all we got in these topics. We want to hear your guys' prayers. Please come and join us on Discord. We'd love to hear from you guys. Um, like and subscribe. Follow the show if you're on the podcast. We would love that. That's all we got for you guys. God bless.